Hello students and welcome to online teaching series of Gokhale Education Society's Central Coordination Committee for Junior Colleges, Nashik Zone. In this video, we will be discussing a ballad, Inchcape Rock by Robert Saudi. Before we start the discussion of the ballad, let me remind you of one of the fables that you might have come across during childhood. As you sow, so shall you reap. I hope you remember the story of a camel and a jackal, how they used to help each other in the forest for food and how one day they decided to cross the river to go into a sugarcane farm. After eating heartful of it, the jackal started howling out of happiness. The camel requested him not to do it, but he continued and the farmers came, started beating them and made them run away from the farm herd. The herd was still there in the mind of the camel, so to take revenge, while crossing the river one more time, the camel made the fox fall off his back. That is how the fox ended its life. So whatever wrong you give to others, the same thing comes back to you. And the same message is given in this ballad Inchcape Rock. Robert Saudi the poet of this ballad is a poet of the Romantic School of English Literature. He was Poet Laureate, National Poet of his time. He is also known as one of the Lake Poets. William Wordsworth, S. T. Coleridge and Robert Southey used to live in the Lake Districts of UK and together they were known as Lake Poets. He is famous as a poet of After Blenheim. In this video, we would be discussing his ballad, Inchkeep Rock. Let us see what a ballad means. It originally is a dance song, a poem narrating a story with short stanzas. So every ballad would tell us, would narrate an interesting story which can be dramatic, funny or romantic. It has a musical quality that makes it fit to sing. A quatrain, four lines in each stanza with rhyming scheme. So these are the features of a ballad. Some famous ballads are the rhyme of Ancient Marina, La Bella Damson's Mercy, Ballad of Father Gilligan. Inchcape Rock also has an interesting story. Robert Saudi came across interesting fact and he made ballad on that. Let us see the background of Inchcape Rock. The abbot, abbot means head of a monastic community. The head of Aberbrothock, which was a community in Scotland, installed a bell at the Inchcape in the sea that was almost 18 kilometers above the water level. It was for the warning for the sailors. So this is how the Inchcape rock looked like. An abbot tied Inchcape bell near the lighthouse. Sir Ralph the pirate decided to cut the bell out of jealousy and wickedness. He continued his journey and came back to the same place. It was a heavy storm and their ship dashed against the Inchcape as there was no bell as warning. So when Sir Ralph did something out of wickedness, what was there in store for him? Let us see. We would be going stanza wise. No stir in the air, no stir in the sea. The ship was still as she could be. Her sails from heaven, he saved no motion. Her keel was steady in the ocean. So when a ship would sail through the water, through the sea, it would have no movement. Stir means movement. No movement in the air, no movement in the sea. The ship was still as she could be, would move very calmly. Her sails from heaven received no motion, from heaven also no message and her keel was very steady. Keel means bottom of the ship, base of the ship. Without either sign or sound of their shock, the waves flowed over the Inchcape rock. Without any sign of danger or even shock, the waves continued to flow on the Inchcape rock. So little they rose, so little they fell. They means the waves. The waves rose very little, they moved very little, they did not move the Inchcape bell. The Inchcape bell was 
very calm and quiet there itself when there would not be any movement of the wave. The worthy abbot of Aberbrothok had placed that bell on the Inchgate rock. On a boy in the storm it floated and swung, and over the waves its warning rung. So the Inchgate bell was tied by abbot of Aberbrothok on a boy that is anchored float as navigation mark. The boy means here that Inchgate bell. It was a mark, navigation mark for everyone to see. It used to swing and float on the waves and it would warn the sailors. When the rock was hit by the surge's swell, the mariners heard the warning bell. When the rock was hidden because of the swell of the surge, that is sudden rise in the level of the sea. So when it would be sudden movement of the waves, when they would be higher and the rock would be hidden, the warning bell would start moving and the mariners, the sailors would realize that yes, there is something dangerous over here. And then they knew the perilous rock, perilous, dangerous and bless the abbot of Aberbrothok. So that is the background of the ballad. Now we come to the main story. The sun in the heaven was shining gay. All things were joyful on that day. On a particular day, the sun was shining very brightly. Everything was very joyful, pleasant. The sea birds screamed as they wheeled round and there was joyance in their sound. So the sea birds which were flying over there, they wheeled round, they moved round the ship and they screamed out of joyance, joyance, joy. There was a joy in their sound. So everywhere there was happiness. The boy of the Inchcape bell was seen. The base of the bell could be seen. A darker speck on the ocean green. As if it was on the ocean green, just a dot, just a mark. Sir Ralph the Rover walked his deck and fixed his eye on the darker speck. Sir Ralph the Rover was a pirate. He was standing on his deck and suddenly he fixed his eye on that particular mark which was actually Inchcape Bell. He felt the cheering power of spring. It made him whistle, it made him sing. Suddenly he became happy. He started whistling, he started singing. His heart was mirthful to excess. To the maximum level his heart was mirthful, joyful. But the rover's mirth was wickedness. But his joy, mirth, happiness was not a pure one but out of wickedness. So what he did? His eye was on the Inchcape float. Quoth he, quoth he means said he. He said, my men, put out the boat. He looked at the floating Inchcape bell and he said, take the boat there and draw me to the Inchcape rock and I will plague the abbot of Aberbrothok. Plague here does not mean disease. Plague means to cause pain to somebody. So he told his sellers, my men, take the boat there, take me to the Inchcape rock and I will give pain to abbot of Aberbrothok. The boat is lured, the boatmen row and to the Inchcape rock they go. So they did what was told to them. Sir Ralph went over from the boat and he cut the bell from the Inchcape float. So the wickedness proved itself when Sir Ralph cut the bell and threw it into the sea. Down sang the bell with a gurgling sound. The bubbles rose and burst around. When we put something into the deep water, the object goes down with a gurgling sound and bubbles do appear. Same thing happened with the bell. Immediately he said, quote Sir Ralph, the next who comes to the rock won't bless the abbot of Aberbrothok. So his intention was very clear. He said, next time whenever a sailor would come here, he definitely would not listen to the alarming warning bell and he would not bless abbot of Aberbrothok. So he did not want the generosity and blessing to go to abbot of Aberbrothok. Sir Ralph the rover sailed away. He continued his journey. He scored the seas for many a day. Scored, he travelled freely. And now grown rich with plundered store. He was a pirate, so he looted people in his journey. Whatever looted store he had, he kept it in the ship. He steers his course for Scotland's shore. He redirected his journey. He started coming back to Scotland. So thick a haze overspreads the sky. They cannot see the sun on high. While returning, 
Suddenly there was a haze. There was thin mist, smoke or dust throughout the sky. They could not see clearly the sun and that is why they could not guess where they were. The wind had blown a gale all day. At evening it had died away. Throughout the day there was gale, a strong current of air. In the evening it was not there. It died away means it disappeared. Still they could not see anything clearly. On the deck the rover takes his stand. So dark it is, they see no land. The rover, that is the pirate, was standing on the deck, on the dock, deck, sorry, and he, they could not see any land. He said, it will be lighter soon, for there is the dawn of the rising moon. Though we cannot see anything clearly, don't worry, very soon we would have the moon and everything will be lighter. Cast here, said one. Cast means cannot. I cannot hear the breakers roar. I cannot see any, I cannot listen to any warning roar. Roar means a sound. For me thinks we should be near the shore. Me thinks means I think. I think we should be near the land. Now, where we are, I cannot tell. But I wish we could hear the inch cave bell. So when Ralph the rower said, I think we should be near the land. The sailor replied, I don't know. Because I cannot tell right now for sure because of the absence of inch cave bell. So the sailors realized that inch cave bell was actually helping all the sailors. They hear no sound. The swell is strong. Swell means the rise of the water level. It became stronger. Still they could not listen to any sound. Though the wind had fallen, they drift along. There was no wind. Strong current of air wasn't there. Still, they moved very slowly because of the danger of Inchcape Rock. Till the vessel strikes with a shivering shock. Vessel here means the ship. The ship finally dashed against a shiver, shivering shock and they cried, Oh Christ, it is the Inchcape Rock. Finally, what they were trying to miss out, what they were trying to avoid happened. The ship dashed against the Inchcape Rock. Sir Ralph the rower tore his hair. Tore means he pulled his hair with force. Sir Ralph the rower tore his hair. He cursed himself in his despair. Despair? His frustration. He realized what mistake he did. So he cursed himself. The waves rush in on every side. Rush in, entered in. The waves entered into the ship from every side. The ship is sinking beneath the tide. The tidal waves were so forceful that the ship started sinking. But even in his dying fear, one dreadful sound could the rover hear. He realized that it is his last breath. But even during that fear of death, he could listen to one sound. A sound as if with the inch cape bell. The devil below was ringing his knell. Robert Saudi beautifully brings out poetic justice. He imagines the sound of Inchcape Bell which was actually factually lying there beneath the water level. It is as if the devil below was ringing the knell of Sir Ram. Knell means the sound of bell at the funeral of a person. So as if Devil himself was welcoming Sir Ralph into the world after life. This is how whatever he did for others came back to him and he met the end of his life. I hope the meaning of the poem is clear. Let us quickly see figures of speech which are used. Alliteration. There are many examples. Few are mentioned here. The ship was still as she could be. Sound show is repeated. The boat is lowered, the boatmen row. The sound burr is repeated. The same way all the examples of alliteration can be studied. Personification. The waves rush in every side. Waves are given human quality of entering forcefully into something. Repetition is used thrice. No stir is repeated. 
so little is repeated for the poetic beauty the third example is for you to find out similarly you have to find out madapa onomatopoeia simile and rhyming scheme of the ballad rhyming scheme is studied in the previous videos as well so before we end up let's recap we have seen the installing bell at the inch cape by abbot of aberbrothock we have seen how sir ralph the rover behaves wickedly and removes the bell and how he himself gets trapped in storm and dashes against the rock and dies so the message that the ballad gives is you must remember that your gestures are returned by destiny so behave cordially with everyone i hope you have enjoyed the ballad read the ballad you will understand and experience the role of destiny in our lives thank you and happy learning